Hello everyone. In this video we'll be speaking about the strip method. The strip method basically returns a string that is free from any leading or trailing spaces. So we're going to demonstrate what that means. We first we'll declare a string uh, with, sorry, with a leading space. And then we'll declare a string with a trailing space and then we'll declare a string with both a leading and a trailing space just to see what happens. So we'll start with the first one. It's a string, a string, sorry, I can't spell, um, underscore one is equal to, I'm just going to tab, sorry, I'm meant to be tabbing twice here just to put some leading space before my string. This is the string. So that's my first string. And then we will declare, I'm just going to copy that. We will declare another string, I'll call it string2. And this time we will have some trailing space, so I'm going to tab about two to three times. And then the last one is declare a third string with both leading and trailing spaces. So I'll tab about two to three times. And then what we'll do is, um, and let me just do this so we can see better. So, so far I've declared three strings. One's got a leading space, one's got a trailing space, and one's got both leading and trailing space. Let's print out the strings before applying the strip method. So just a basic uh, print method, print line, so that we can have, yep. And then I'll say, so the value, or oh, maybe I'll just call it the name of the myth of the variable before it's, oh, before strip. Okay. And then I'll just concatenate that value. So that's the first print statement. That's the second. That's the third. Just make sure I change the values here. So I'll have my third, second and third variable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to declare a new strong, uh, new strings, declare new strings that hold the stripped values. Uh, first, let me just print out. Let's see what we get for that one. So basically, uh, we just get all of our three strings. So this is the, the, um, leading space this is the trailing space this is both this is both the leading and the trailing space so uh, what we want to do now is declare three new strings that hold the stripped values so stripped string one is equal to a string underscore one dot strip so this is how we call the strip methods basically and we know it's a method because we had to call it through some sort of an object. So that dot here means this is a method and it's not a function. So anyway, we'll just keep on going. And then over here, I'm going to call this string2 and we'll apply the strip method on our third, second variable and now our third variable. So it, um, there's nothing. We've just declared three values that we want to now print out. So let's print out the stripped strings. So we would probably call it. Oh, actually, no, I'll keep that. But I'll say after yep, after. And then I'll print out these values now. OK, I think that's what we should be getting. And let's run the program. So the strip method gets got rid of the trailing space in our first variable, sorry, the leading space. And then the, the second strip method gotten rid of our trailing space. So you can see that I can, so he, over here, we can't really see the trailing space because it's just an empty space, but I can actually select it. Over here, I can't, I can no longer select it. So that's how we know we got rid of the space. Now in the third one, we got rid of both of the leading and the trailing spaces. So um, by the way, this is the space that I've actually got in my 
in my program here, that space. So the, the spaces are actually gone. I can't select any further from this. Okay, but I just wanted to make a note that the values of the original strings don't really change. So if I actually try to print this again, we'll notice that the strip method basically doesn't really change the value of this. It just returns a new string that we then saved into a new variable. Now we could also do this like this. If I don't want to keep the returned value in a variable, like let's say I don't really care. I just want to print out the value. I don't want to store it into a variable. So you can also do it like that. But if you felt like you actually wanted to store the result in a variable that you want to use multiple times in your program, then yeah, do it, put it into a variable and um, save multiple calls from the strip method every time. But um, I just wanted to put it this way for demonstration purposes, but it's up to you then. Um, if you find that you are using this multiple times, put it into a variable. So anyway, let's just uh, show how if I print this again, so we'll notice that this is the original values of our strings. And after the strip, that doesn't really change the original variable. So I printed the variables again. They all come back with the trailing spaces and the leading, um, le uh, sorry, trailing and the leading spaces. Okay, but there's one more thing that I want to do before I end this video is what if we have a string with only empty spaces? So let's see what happens. So string, I'm going to uh, call this a string four. And I'm just going to add a lot of spaces in here. Let's print out the string before applying the strip method. So maybe that. Sorry, I can't select for for some reason. And that's the fourth string. And now I want to print out the string after applying the string method. So this time what I'll do is um, I'll say after and this time I'll just do it this way um, just to show you how I don't need to put it into a variable if I'm only using it just once. Okay, let's run it. So we are at this point so I can actually select all of the space that came from this long string with of spaces. But after, after the strip method, that, that space is basically this one over here but I can't select any further because it strips out all the empty spaces. So basically just returns an empty string, which pretty much looks like um, this. Okay, so I hope this helps you. Stay tuned in the next video. I'm going to talk about the is empty method. So I'll see you then.